May 2. David Takes a Census Once again the anger of the Lord burned against Israel, and he caused David to harm them by taking a census. Go and count the people of Israel and Judah, the Lord told him. So the king said to Joab and the commanders of the army, Take a census of all the tribes of Israel, from Dan in the north to Beersheba in the south, so I may know how many people there are. But Joab replied to the king, May the Lord your God let you live to see a hundred times as many people as there are now. But why, my lord the king, do you want to do this? But the king insisted that they take the census. So Joab and the commanders of the army went out to count the people of Israel. First, they crossed the Jordan and camped at Aror, south of the town in the valley, in the direction of Gad. Then they went on to Jazer, then to Gilead in the land of tatum Hadshi, and to dan and around to Sidon. Then they came to the fortress of Tyre and all the towns of the Hivites and Canaanites. Finally, they went south to Judah as far as Beersheba. Having gone through the entire land for nine months and twenty days, they returned to Jerusalem. Joab reported the number of people to the king. There were 800,000 capable warriors in Israel who could handle a sword and 500,000 in Judah. From First Chronicles Satan rose up against Israel and caused David to take a census of the people of Israel. So David said to Joab and the commanders of the army, Take a census of all the people of Israel, from Beersheba in the south to Dan in the north, and bring me a report so I may know how many there are. But Joab replied, May the Lord increase the number of his people a hundred times over, but why, my lord the king, do you want to do this? Are they not all your servants? Why must you cause Israel to sin? But the king insisted that they take the census. So Joab traveled throughout all Israel to count the people. Then he returned to Jerusalem and reported the number of people to David. There were 1,100,000 warriors in all Israel who could handle a sword, and 470,000 in Judah. But Joab did not include the tribes of Levi and Benjamin in the census because he was so distressed at what the king had made him do. From Second Samuel, Judgment for David's Sin But after he had taken the census, David's conscience began to bother him. And he said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly by taking this census. Please forgive my guilt, Lord, for doing this foolish thing. The next morning, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Gad, who was David's seer. This was the message. Go and say to David, this is what the Lord says. I will give you three choices. Choose one of these punishments, and I will inflict it on you. So Gad came to David and asked him, Will you choose three years of famine throughout your land, three months of fleeing from your enemies, or three days of severe plague throughout your land? Think this over and decide what answer I should give the Lord who sent me. I'm in a desperate situation, David replied to Gad. But let us fall into the hands of the Lord, for his mercy is great. Do not let me fall into human hands. So the Lord sent a plague upon Israel that morning, and it lasted for three days. A total of 70,000 people died throughout the nation, from Dan in the north to Beersheba in the south. But as the angel was preparing to destroy Jerusalem, the Lord relented and said to the death angel, Stop. That is enough. At that moment, the angel of the Lord was by the threshing floor of Aruna the Jebusite. When David saw the angel, he said to the Lord, I am the one who has sinned and done wrong, but these people are as innocent as sheep. What have they done? Let your anger fall against me and my family. From First Chronicles God was very displeased with the census, and he punished Israel for it. Then David said to God, I have sinned greatly by taking this census. Please forgive my guilt for doing this foolish thing. Then the Lord spoke to Gad, David's seer. This was the message. Go and say to David, this is what the Lord says. I will give you three choices. Choose one of these punishments, and I will inflict it on you. So Gad came to David and said, These are the choices the Lord has given you. You may choose three years of famine, three months of destruction by the sword of your enemies, or three days of severe plague, as the angel of the Lord brings devastation throughout the land of Israel. Decide what answer I should give the Lord who sent me. 
I'm in a desperate situation, David replied to Gad. But let me fall into the hands of the Lord, for his mercy is very great. Do not let me fall into human hands. So the Lord sent a plague upon Israel, and 70,000 people died as a result. And God sent an angel to destroy Jerusalem. But just as the angel was preparing to destroy it, the Lord relented and said to the death angel, Stop, that is enough. At that moment, the angel of the Lord was standing by the threshing floor of Aruna, the Jebusite. David looked up and saw the angel of the Lord standing between heaven and earth with his sword drawn, reaching out over Jerusalem. So David and the leaders of Israel put on burlap to show their deep distress and fell face down on the ground. And David said to God, I am the one who called for this census. I am the one who has sinned and done wrong. But these people are as innocent as sheep. What have they done? O Lord my God, let your anger fall against me and my family, but do not destroy your people. From 2 Samuel, David builds an altar. That day Gad came to David and said to him, Go up and build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Aruna the Jebusite. So David went up to do what the Lord had commanded him. When Aruna saw the king and his men coming toward him, he came and bowed before the king with his face to the ground. Why have you come, my lord the king? Aruna asked. David replied, I have come to buy your threshing floor and to build an altar to the Lord there so that he will stop the plague. Take it, my lord the king, and use it as you wish, Aruna said to David. Here are oxen for the burnt offering, and you can use the threshing boards and ox yokes for wood to build a fire on the altar. I will give it all to you, your majesty, and may the Lord your God accept your sacrifice. But the king replied to Aruna, No, I insist on buying it, for I will not present burnt offerings to the Lord my God that have cost me nothing. So David paid him fifty pieces of silver for the threshing floor and the oxen. David built an altar there to the Lord and sacrificed burnt offerings and peace offerings. And the Lord answered his prayer for the land, and the plague on Israel was stopped. From First Chronicles Then the angel of the Lord told Gad to instruct David to go up and build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Aruna the Jebusite. So David went up to do what the Lord had commanded him through Gad. Aruna, who was busy threshing wheat at the time, turned and saw the angel there. His four sons, who were with him, ran away and hid. When Aruna saw David approaching, he left his threshing floor and bowed before David with his face to the ground. David said to Aruna, Let me buy this threshing floor from you at its full price. Then I will build an altar to the Lord there, so that he will stop the plague. Take it, my lord the king, and use it as you wish, Aruna said to David. I will give the oxen for the burnt offerings and the threshing boards for wood to build a fire on the altar and the wheat for the grain offering. I will give it all to you. But King David replied to Aruna, No, I insist on buying it for the full price. I will not take what is yours and give it to the Lord. I will not present burnt offerings that have cost me nothing. So David gave Aruna six hundred pieces of gold in payment for the threshing floor. David built an altar there to the Lord and sacrificed burnt offerings and peace offerings. And when David prayed, the Lord answered him by sending fire from heaven to burn up the offering on the altar. Then the Lord spoke to the angel, who put the sword back into its sheath. When David saw that the Lord had answered his prayer, he offered sacrifices there at Aruna's threshing floor. At that time, the tabernacle of the Lord and the altar of burnt offering that Moses had made in the wilderness were located at the place of worship in Gibeon. But David was not able to go there to inquire of God because he was terrified by the drawn sword of the angel of the Lord. Then David said, This will be the location for the temple of the Lord God and the place of the altar for Israel's burnt offerings. Preparations for the Temple So David gave orders to call together the foreigners living in Israel, and he assigned them the task of preparing finished stone for building the temple of God. David provided large amounts of iron for the nails that would be needed for the doors in the gates and for the clamps, and he gave more bronze than could be weighed. He also provided innumerable cedar logs, for the men of Tyre and Sidon had brought vast amounts of cedar to David. David said, My son Solomon is still young and inexperienced, and since the temple to be built for the Lord must be a magnificent structure, famous and glorious throughout the world, I will begin making preparations for it now. So David collected vast amounts of building materials before his death. 
Then David sent for his son Solomon and instructed him to build a temple for the Lord, the God of Israel. My son, I wanted to build a temple to honor the name of the Lord my God, David told him. But the Lord said to me, You have killed many men in the battles you have fought, and since you have shed so much blood in my sight, you will not be the one to build a temple to honor my name. But you will have a son who will be a man of peace. I will give him peace with his enemies in all the surrounding lands. His name will be Solomon, and I will give peace and quiet to Israel during his reign. He is the one who will build a temple to honor my name. He will be my son, and I will be his father, and I will secure the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever." Now, my son, may the Lord be with you and give you success as you follow his directions in building the temple of the Lord your God. And may the Lord give you wisdom and understanding that you may obey the law of the Lord your God as you rule over Israel. For you will be successful if you carefully obey the decrees and regulations that the Lord gave to Israel through Moses. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or lose heart. I have worked hard to provide materials for building the temple of the Lord, nearly 4,000 tons of gold, 40,000 tons of silver, and so much iron and bronze that it cannot be weighed. I have also gathered timber and stone for the walls, though you may need to add more. You have a large number of skilled stonemasons and carpenters and craftsmen of every kind. You have expert goldsmiths and silversmiths and workers of bronze and iron. Now begin the work, and may the Lord be with you. Then David ordered all the leaders of Israel to assist Solomon in this project. The Lord your God is with you, he declared. He has given you peace with the surrounding nations. He has handed them over to me, and they are now subject to the Lord and his people. Now seek the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. Build the sanctuary of the Lord God so that you can bring the ark of the Lord's covenant and the holy vessels of God into the temple built to honor the Lord's name.